Would you believe me if I told you that the large decrease in faith and church attendance is driven by the decline of marriage? That the plummeting number of people in the pews and decline of faith in Jesus is because too many young people grow up without married parents? Let me prove it to you. Some background. For the first time in the Gallup Poll's 87-year history, a majority of Americans say they do not belong to any house of worship, most of whom have no religion at all. That is a 23-point drop since the year 2000. That's huge. Nothing short of a cultural revolution. Today, Catholic and other Christian leaders try to fight this revolution by spending somewhere between four and six billion dollars annually on youth ministry to stop youth from falling away. Yet, many young people are leaving Christianity behind earlier and earlier. A study of former Catholics found that 74% left the faith between the ages of 10 and 20, with age 13 being the median age when kids leave. So at a time when the church has never spent more on evangelizing youth, we've never been less effective at passing on the faith. Why is that? Comenio commissioned an academic study that found that if a millennial grew up in a continuously married home and a baby boomer grew up in a continuously married home, the two attend church every single week at nearly the same exact rate. Our analysis of Pew Research data shows that changes in family structure began with the sexual revolution in the 1960s, and the collapse of faith grew as the children of this revolution did. So the collapse of faith is an effect of the collapse of marriage. To put it another way, our churches would largely be full today if Gen X, Millennials, and Gen Z enjoyed the same family structure as baby boomers. So the health of a person's faith is directly connected to the health of that person's family. When there are fewer lasting marriages, there are fewer children with married parents, and a decline in faith always follows. The new evangelization called for by Pope St. John Paul II must therefore be a nuptial movement. None of this should surprise us. The Bible begins and ends with a wedding. God's story of salvation is told as a spousal love story. This is why the enemy has sought to destroy the marital embrace. From 1970 to today, there's been a 61% drop in the number of people getting married. Catholic weddings are down 75% going back to 1970. And churches are not yet engaged in the fight to save the family. While billions are spent on youth each and every year, 85% of all churches and 82% of Catholic parishes spend zero dollars on marriage and relationship ministry. But here's some good news. In Jacksonville, Florida, my organization coordinated an ecumenical project to strengthen marriages. Christians moved nearly 60,000 people through relationship skills education over three years, and the divorce rate plunged 24%. We found that when churches do get involved in this fight, the church can win. So here's what needs to happen. Catholic parishes should evangelize by becoming hubs for healthy relationships, both for single and married people. We can only grow as disciples through living out our vocation. This means marriage ministry must become an essential and standard part of parish life. The culture has broken the very idea and cadence of healthy dating, so much so that few get married. So parish life must build community for the unmarried and leverage existing skills and resources to help form and discern relationships. All Catholics can offer to help their pastor make this a reality. Sister Lucia, one of the children who received the apparitions of Our Lady of Fatima, predicted that the final battle between the kingdom of the Lord and the kingdom of Satan will be about marriage and the family. I think that battle has commenced. Will we, as faithful Catholics, answer the call to fight for marriage? I'm J.P. DeGantz of Comenio for Edify. If you like my Edify video, you'll love this one next to me. Thank you for watching.